I'm with you there, just so I can not be the same as you and contrarian. I'm going to go 4-3 here for Steven, but the lad's just been on fire. But with all of that said, let's not talk abstractly anymore, because we are loaded in here to game number one here on Death Aura of this best of seven grand fucking finals match. And spawning down in the bottom right-hand corner, the purple Zerg player, it is Steven. And spawning in the top left corner, it is the Yellow Terran, Faz. Yes, it is. At this moment, I'd like to take a moment to uh, GT Kong and see you in chat. Anybody else we get trickling in? Let's hear your predictions. Let's see what you guys are thinking here about this match. We know it's going to be a good one. These guys never really disappoint here. And I'd like to see what uh, what you guys are thinking. And so talk to me a little bit about um, Death Aura in TVZ, Coda. Um, how do you feel about it? Do you think that, like, you know, obviously it's got a longer attack path with until those rocks are cleared out, but there's the acceleration zones, which acceleration zones in, like, Zergling, Baneling versus Marine fights can be a super big wild card there. So uh, talk to me a little bit. What do you think? Certainly. So for this matchup on this map, I feel like uh, tank play is pretty favored. Also, uh, some of the mine's pretty good. But there, there's just a lot of really good positions that you can kind of abuse um if you look can you see my pings nope, nope um, but so if you're looking at top right that high ground uh for the gases if i'm sorry yeah i can i see it's bottom so yeah so use, bottom. use 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 the clock right like yeah high ground um there's a lot of really good tank positions that can shoot and cover all the different little chokes that units can run through and you just take excessive damage that you don't need to take yeah, a lot of these corners around the the fourth base, or sorry, the fifth base, um, or sorry, no, actually, yeah, the fourth base, as well, right? That you can kind of get those tanks set up on, but yeah, so you can really cut people off um, from their different bases with good tank positioning. And do you feel like uh, clearing out these rocks early is more a Zerg or Terran beneficial thing? Because they really do. Like once those two, you you see what I mean? Those those two center pathway rocks are cleared out. It definitely changes the dynamic of the map a little bit. You know? Yeah. Um. I think it's more favored for Terran to get rid of those because Zerg units are quicker and they can rotate up that ramp and around pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. But forcing Terran to have to move around and make these adjustments. Reaper doing some stuff, doing the dance. Yeah. Um. We're going to see just, a lot of these Reaper dances good. in this series, you know? <laughs> it's going to be a Reaper dance maybe every game. Probably every game, you know? Unless we get, like, a proxy racks or something, we're going to get some Reaper dances. Which I could totally see him bringing out. I don't expect him to play standard for, you know, seven games. And I, I don't think either of these guys should. You know, they both talked about how they've exhausted each other's bags of tricks. And, you know, yeah. But in a best of seven, I think it always behooves you to um, mix things up a little bit. That SCV off in the corner for Foz, is that just like a... He's left it there so, to idle, or is that a proxy, you think? I don't see this being a mistake. Um, I think yeah. we're going to see a fusion core. <gasps> I would love that so much. And that's, on that's Steven's end, too, um, this is a little wonky. Fast, super fast overlord speed, and a late third base, 330. Certainly, certainly not the fastest third base you would see here in TVC. I feel like a typical timing for that is going to be, you know, 20 to 30 seconds faster than that. But, Steven, checking those boxes there. Oh, oh. yeah. No, nope, so he's not doing the it. The reason? Okay. He's going back home. Uh, it might be because he doesn't see a third base. Yeah. Or didn't, at least at that point. Um. So the reason, I think, for Overlord to be on this map is you don't have an Overlord in the natural. Ah, like, uh, that's a good point. Yep. So he needs to get in there and find uh, some information. And it is going to be Cloaked Banshees and Stim coming out here very quickly here for Foz. So a little bit of pressure out on the map. Again, those Banshees are quite useful because any of those Roach-based timings or plays, they really allow you to control the map, lock those down. Um, but he doesn't look like he's going to be overly committing to this. Again, we see Stim has already begun. He's switching over to build that reactor on this uh, the factory, which I presume will, after the second Banshee, probably switch with the starport. And there's the first engineering bay, double racks. It's going to be a pretty standard bio play here from Foz. Oh, he's going to cancel the uh, cloak as well because it was identified. Oh, what a smart little opening there. It gets... In... Oh, wait. Steven... Oh, wait. I Sorry, as these Hellions start diving into the natural here, Steven has to run away. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's see how much damage gets done here. There are still three Hellions. They can one-shot drones. Right now, seven have gone down. 
and counting. Let's see. 9, 10, 11. Might be able to get another shot off. Nope, that's it. Could have been worse there for Steven, but still. I mean, I think you take that trade. What was that? Four Hellions for 11 drones? Yeah, that was really good. And now the Banshee's going to fly in and try to see if he can find any purchase. Oh, he needs to be very careful. It's actually Ooh. getting shelled down Whoa. very quickly. Oof. Okay, well, n now that's more even. Um, Scouting Banshee. Yeah. That's an expensive scout right there. Um, yeah. Now, again, he didn't commit to Cloak or anything. So it's not like he just threw away as much of an investment as it could have been initially. But still, I think that the, that does even it up a little bit there. Um, the Hellions traded out very well, but then obviously that Banshee just kind of flew to its death. So we see true. the third CC about halfway done here for Foz. Spire now on the way here for Steven. So it looks like it's going to be a, what you got to say is one of the most classic um, compositional duels in StarCraft II, which is Biotank versus Ling Bane Muta. I mean, it doesn't get more classic yeah. than that, does it? No, it doesn't. So this is what I was talking about. Faz moving across the map. He, he Scans, showed that he was doing he some aggression. Fire there. That's important. That is important. That's good. But So he just did all this worker damage to Steven, and now Steven wants the drone, and now he's coming across with 14 Marines. Yeah. So just going to keep the pressure on. 12 drones are on the way right now. The army supply is fairly low here for Steven. This is very technical defense with these queens. He needs to control them very well. But they are a lot of them, and they've got a lot of energy, which means transfuse should mean that these queens never die. That's a lot of DPS, but with that amount of healing available to the Zerg player, he's going to be okay. But again, Foz isn't really going for critical damage here, just keeping that creep contained. And as of yet, he's done a very good, uh, a very good job of that. Um, going to drop there and pick oh. off another creep tumor. He needs to be careful here. He's going to go up into the main. But uh, you can't drop on Zerglings like that. He's going to try. He's going to bleed out a few things. But this is actually a nice little spot he's got for himself here. He's going to cancel that fourth. Yeah, he's going to cancel that fourth. Certainly he is. There we go. And that's a nice little bit of damage there um, for Foz. Kind of eking that damage out. Two Mutalisks on the way. But with the supply block, they're not going to be done in time. And Faz, I think, is now going to get ready to push out here. He's got uh, three tanks, and he can probably hit a timing since he cleared creep on the left side of the map and um, really pressure that third base now. The fourth base was canceled. I'd like yeah. to see him do that. And the other thing to note here is that there is a pretty large window here where he does have an upgrade advantage. He is getting 2-1, while the 1-1 of Steven is approaching halfway done. Um, obviously, yep. in, in Lings versus Marine matches, those upgrades mean an awful lot because both Zerglings and Marines attack very quickly. And I really like this attack coda. What do Mutalisks want to do? Get across the map and start harassing you? They can't do that if they're forced to stay at home for the defense. Correct. Let's also note, Banelink speed's only halfway down. Ooh, that's a good point. That's and this creep point. isn't that far out because he cleared some of it at the beginning. And yeah. the Queens are all on the right side of the map right now due to the other medevac drop. This is looking really good for Faz. Yeah, there's only six Banelings, and there's slow Banelings, like you mentioned. Foss needs to start leapfrogging these tanks forward. But again, if, if nothing else, he is locking down this creep spread. As he goes in on that fourth once again, it looks like he's probably going to get it. He might have to sacrifice these Marines, but he's going to... Oh, no, there's too much transfuser. But Steven on the other side is crashing into the tanks with the Mutalisks. Foss needs to get back there and defend them. Does keep all of those tanks alive. Loses the fourth base. Loses the fourth base. Oh, he was distracted. He didn't get the transfuses off. And now this is looking very dire here for Steven. He's got units in his third. His fourth got canceled. These mutas are coming in from the back and picking off a lot of tanks. That's great for him, but... Uh, I mean... All in all here, even if he clears this army out, this is a, a solid enough trade here for Faz. He's burning almost all the queen energy. He's keeping the mutas at home, and... I mean, behind this, we have Drilling Claws, we have turrets coming up. He will get cleaned up here eventually, it looks like. But, I mean, this attack accomplished everything that he could have wanted and more. It killed the fourth. That's correct. It kept the mutas at home. And behind this, he's just getting all of the tools in his little so, Terran toy chest. Steven's dropping his fourth, and these Radivacs just unloaded these Marines. They're going to come in and pick this again. Oh, that would be absolutely devastating of a blow here, especially as these Mutas it's try happening. and get across the map. Here we go. Yeah, that's gone. He's got to cancel it. God does get the cancel, but... And we do have another fourth coming up on the other side, but Foz, with his foot on the gas pedal here, by now, the, these Mutas are going to come in. The, the turret's done. He's going to be able to get a little bit of damage, but, I mean... 
his window where these mutas were a, a X factor in this game has come and gone. True. Now, there's a lot of mutas here now, though. They are going to try and hunt down the medvac on the right side. Not going to find it. Um, and once again, Faz pushing to kill the fourth base. Again. 18 mutalisks in the sky, but that is at the cost of the Baneling count, which lies at about to go up to 18 right now. Nothing crazy. And with these Widow Mines here, that base is dead. He's going to start pushing in on the other side. That looks looks like there's some Ling Bane here that's going to shove this back. The mutas in the background trying to dive on a turret. Oh, they're, they're engaging a turret there. and Marines. Uh, Faz is pushing forward. He needs to stim and be very careful here. He's got some burrowed mines, but again, this creep is pushed back as more queens go down. Like that was a really, that was a good, really good baneling hit. hit. Yeah, but still, this That's is so. That you need. This is just so suffocating here from Faz. I mean, the creep spread is just not being allowed to get pushed out. He's actually going to go in. Where's the mine drop? There's Steven. the mine drop. Steven is wise to it though. Not going to get himself picked off here. No real damage gets done. Reburrows, unburrows, reburrows, and they get killed. But again, just the, the tone of this game has just been suffocating here for Steven. He hasn't been able to get the creep pushed out. He hasn't been able to get damage done with his mutas. He's going for a big counterattack here, which is going to get cut off. He needs to not, like, get hit by these bailings, but if he does that, I mean, like... Faz is in prime position here. Put burrow on the high ground. Oh, Steven is very fortunate he did not go up that ramp or we would have had a very, very sad Zerg player. Actually, he might get the fourth base. It's getting low, Coda. I don't know. He is going to get shoved back here at the last second. But he's, he's going to push in. on the left side. Oh, can these mine hits get good damage? Some decent initial hits here. More of them burrowing. Good hit there. But more banelings get cleared out. He gets the fourth oh, in the DC background. Up. Yep, CC went down. Oh my gosh, this game is absolute madness here. Another thing to point out though, Hive is done. No 3-3 three, three yet. Three plus three attack about to finish here for Faz. There's his 3-3 three, three starting up, but again, while that upgrade window is open, this bio is going to be absolutely lethal here to the Zerg army. Now Faz, he's played very well this game, but he needs to make sure he gets that fourth base up and gets it up soon. A three base Terran will eventually just start to run out of steam here. Yes. Especially as these Hive upgrades come into play. Th plus three, plus three, Adrenal Glands, Ultralisks. You need that fourth base. You need Liberators. You need Ghosts. You need all those attacking. things. Oh, and Again. there's no turrets. They're going to clear up those oh. Marines. And A great engagement we in the background there by Steven yep. as well. And it actually looks like the wheels are falling off a little bit here for Foz. He's going to lose his third. You see, GG is called... Let's get on into things here. It's game number two in the bottom left-hand corner. The blue Terran player looking to bounce back. It is Foz. And in the top right corner, purple Zerg, it is Steven. Or as Eternal calls him, Stefan. <laughs> no. Is that, is that the build that Stefan did? It's just like, no, he can't do it. His Canadian brain cannot <laughs> say Steven. It. He just can't do it. He can't do it. Stefan to him. And it will always be Stefan. That's, um... And that's just the that's way the of things. That's the spelling of my middle name, actually. Uh, that's the spelling of my older brother, but his name is Steven. And it's Stephen. pronounced Steven. Yeah, Thank I was going to say, yeah, that's my older brother's name. It's spelled like that, and it's Steven. Like, we yeah. need to go fight this Canadian. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'll call my older brother and get him to fight with you. He's a workout. He's like a workout freak, and he's super badass, so, you know, it'll be great. I mean, we have quick a pool, pool first here from Steven. We do have a quick pool. I mean, it's a 17 pool, right? So nothing yeah. crazy. No 12 pools here. But, like, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, if it's Reaper Fast Expand, even a 17 or 18 pool, you can still get Zergos across the map and cancel or so, force to cancel. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the moves here is that if you SCV scout, which it looks like Foz is, <laughs> you see the timing of the hatchery and you know to keep the Reaper at home, and from there you're pretty okay, right? Because this whole yeah. thing here from Steven is that you want to dodge the Reaper around the map, have it be getting to your base while your lings get there and cancel the CC. So if he scouts, which he is, like, he should handle this no problem, right? He's going to see the timing. He's going to be like, okay, Reaper stays at home, and we go from there, right? Like, Yes. 100%. He should still do that. Uh, but you also have to, you know, be smart with it, too. Like, if you don't send your Reaper across the map, then you also risk um, 
missing the follow-up, which is a Roach War. That's why, personally, I, when I see a... a oh, first, I hope he goes I into will... the main. I hope he goes into the main. Oh, go into the main. He's going into the main. Good. This is going yep. to be absolutely useful. Steven here, he takes game number one, and he immediately opts for something a little bit cheeky. You like to see it. The question is, is will he get the scout up? Nope. He That's doesn't... why you gotta send your Reaper across. He doesn't, but... I feel like when you see them pull drones to stop the scout, you don't know what's coming, but that does ring an alarm bell, right? Like, you're like, okay, like, if there was nothing here, especially a player like Steven would not sacrifice the drones on minerals to deny this, right? He just <laughs> wouldn't, right? Like, if there was nothing there to see, he wouldn't do that. And he did Correct. that. And I like that the Reaper is now going across the map, going to try and get a glance at what things are, are, or what's going on here. The factory already getting the tech lab on it, and the bunker on the high ground. I think Foz has made that exact same reading. He's going to get in, he immediately sees the Roach, and he goes, okay, okay. Lair's starting up behind this. Steven not planning to commit to this over long, but Foz, I believe, has called and played everything absolutely perfectly so far. So, yes, I, I agree. Um, what one... With one alteration, this bunker needed to be on the low ground. You he think? He end up having to lift his CC, or he should have to lift his CC. Well, it is only um, three roaches. So once this cyclone yes. gets out, like, he's not a... Fr one cyclone can just start picking him off, right? And he's got some supporting units as well. Like, I don't think he's going to be pissing his pants over three roaches here once the, once the cyclone is out. True. Ah, camera, don't do that. Cyclone Low Raider is the follow-up. Steven's going to go home. Thinks best of it. Saves his units. Delays I think that's DC production for a moment. I think that's smart. I mean, what are those units going to do on that half of the map? All they're going to do is die to a Cyclone, right? He knows yes. that He knows that Foz saw it, right? Like, So why just let those units die when they don't need to? Third CC coming down and no Aspire. Idea. I have no idea of what. Some people just let them die. Well, yeah, but some people aren't Steven, you know? <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. true. This Reaper's going to go in. I imagine it's just going to get killed by Roaches. Not going to get the scout off. But considering the position that he's in, he I think he checked that there's no third. Um, He knows he's on two bases. I would just say drop the scan, man. See if it's a night. Because if he's still on two bases, it's, it's realistically like it's Nidus or it's Spire, right? Like there's not a third thing there that you're just going to chill on two bases for. And considering his third CC is about to finish, like, economically, he's in a wonderful position. I'd love to see this Liberator go in and get some good scouting in. And it's actually certainly going to... Oh, no, he, he changed the rally. It was set to rally in and see, it would have seen the Spire, but it doesn't. Oh, no. No. Now he's going to get he's gonna get five drones. Six drones. Against a low eco Zerg. I mean, that's nothing to shake a stick at. But he doesn't see the Spire, and that is... I mean, I think that if you uh, bird's eye view and you could talk to Foss and you can be like, all right, you can get six drones or you can see the spire. I think he says, I want to see the spire, you know? I'll be honest. I think he knows it's there. This is Railgun's opening and it's so common. They, they attack with some roaches. They make a spire. But he, he watch. He's going to make like six or seven mutas and then he's going to just bust out roaches. So he, what, what the goal is, is to try to get Terran to be like, I'm going to commit to tanks now or I'm going to commit to widow mines. What is because that? Okay. Oh, sorry, there was like two queens dancing under a Liberator, but not attacking until they started attacking. It was I very strange. Dance. They were like walking so into you... the wall, not attacking the Liberator. <laughs> so oh, you open another. roaches, force tanks. Oh, you've actually hope called this perfectly. Tanks. There's six roaches after the mutas, yeah? You've yep. called this perfectly. So after you force tanks, you hope they're on a low marine count, and you hit with mutas. And then you turn around, hoping that they think you're going to commit to mutas, and you go roaches. So they go from tanks to widow mines, and then they're done. Yeah, That's and the goal. That's the goal. I mean, here are the turrets about to finish up right perfectly as these mutas come in. This is the perfect timing for Foz. I, can't even, I don't even think Steven's going to be able to deny the turret. Does deny one of them, but he's just going to pull forward, finish that. That's two SCVs. That is not the damage he was looking for here. And now we have a 3cc Terran who has just taken this muta attack and slapped it away. His upgrades are hugely in advantage. And I'll tell you what, Roaches, when they're down on upgrades against Bio Tank are, like, actually horrible. Like, they're just actually really, really bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes. 
they, they really are, especially when the bio gets uh, out upgrades them. Like it's a, they're SOL. Um, I mean, yeah, it wasn't the best for him, but he made what seven mutas. He is still kind of here, being annoying. Um, he killed a cyclone, two SCVs, now a marine. Um, I don't know. None of three turrets. None of that adds up to what five mutas. I think he lost one, maybe two. He, I know he made six, so five mutas. He lost one, like. Yeah. Like yeah, and did he find did he find damage? One? Did he find damage because he's a good player and mutas are good when you're a good player? Yeah, I don't think he found it anywhere close to the damage he needed. Especially looking at the supplies, you might be like, "Oh, revolt! Look, Steven's ahead. Steven's ahead. He's making roaches. Making roaches obviously kind of artificially inflates your supply in relation to how good your army actually is because roaches are super supply dense, but they're not supply efficient." You want to be heavily ahead in supply if you're the guy building roaches. Yeah, you, you are correct about that. Also, again, note, um, Faz is committing to Widow Mines, which aren't really the best answer against roaches. That is true. Tanks. That so is again, true. The, the philosophy of force tank, force Widow Mine, force tank again. And these mutas haven't died yet. They're still here. They're still doing stuff. They're still doing damage. However, this push is coming across the map, and Steven does not know about it until now. No, he does not. And the Roach, it, there's a lot of Roach Ravager here. I think he's going to be able to shove this yep. back. But hopefully, Foz can oh, see yeah. this and just get out of dodge here. Doesn't need to take this fight. His, his army is faster. Bows are going to go down killing those Widow Mines. And yeah, just don't take this fight. You don't need to. Your army scales better than Roach Ravager does. Looks like he's going to. He's going to start popping Ravagers left and right, actually. And that's not a... Oh, he Biles himself a little bit, too. Here does Steven... A little bit of miscontrol from Steven there. There's certainly a little bit of miscontrol there. And again, I don't think this is an engagement that Foz needed to take, but I mean, it went all right for him. And again, he gets starts 2 2, starts a fourth, and he backs up. And that, that totally makes sense to me. Right now, you're in a position where your army will strongly outscale your opponent's army. There's a window here for Steven where his army is dangerous, but that window, every tick of that game clock gets shorter and shorter. Wow, these mutas are still alive. Um, yeah, so Steven really wanted to just slap that army down and scare Faz out of existence, but that didn't happen. Faz, or uh, Steven didn't trade as well as he could have. And now, honestly, I think Faz can just shut this down real quick. I think he can stim into this almost, yeah. Yeah. Stim's in. He's going to start picking off Ravagers left and right. Faz going to dodge the Biles, not going to get baited in there. And he says, okay, back up. The impetus is on you to attack, not on me to attack. His tank count's going to grow, his upgrades are going to finish, and you can't repair that building. It's still under construction there, but <laughs> Foz is, he's got a supply lead against yes, a Roach does. Ravager player. I mean, shit. Muta's still finding damage. They are still finding damage. It's the little things that matter. But uh, he's pushing across the map now, so now it's going to be Ling Bane, Roach Ravager against Marine Tank, and 2-2 two -two is more than halfway done for Faz. Uh, Bane Speed? Bane Speed's not done yet either, so uh, this is about to deciding moment. Yeah, good dodge on those initial Biles. He's going to come in here. Those Banelings cannot afford to get close to the bio, or they will just die. A few drones going down. As he's trying to look for more and more damage here. To be fair, the medevac energy is like pretty much non-existent here, and every stim is costing Faz a lot of HP. But just looking at the supply, he's just got so freaking much, man. These mutas in the background are going to try and snipe off, snipe off tanks, but they're not looking too good either. Like, the count is super low. Focus fire was really good from Faz, from the tanks onto the Banes, and now the Banes are gone. This army should get cleaned up. Oh, nope. Mutas do snipe the tank. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna clear this out. But again, well, wave two That's comes. Fine. Yeah, here comes yeah. wave two. Time to stim and win. There's the stim, and Steven's army is roundly thrown backwards here. He's trying to switch into plus one attack now, but plus three attack starts here for Foz. Three is bigger than one, Coda. <laughs> Did you know that? One. Yes. We Terrans like 3-3 three, three on Marines. Oh, here we go. That could actually be some good bailing hits here. Foz caught with his pants down a little bit here in this engagement. Not looking the best. He gets off creep. He does a little bit of a split, and he gets himself out of it, I think. 
It's not going to end up being split. as yeah. It's not going to be end up being as good of a trade as it could have been, but not disastrous. Uh, somewhere on the back end, though, he did lose 24, 25 SCDs. Oh, shit. Looks like a big lane Circles? run by. Yeah. That base was late to land because it got rallied to the minerals, and then, I guess, late to build a PF as well. And due to that, Ling run by, do good damage. Yeah, but, ugh. Faz is going to be forced back, it looks like, but... I mean, Steven is defending here by the skin of his teeth, and I guess that is what we said in game number one as well, but... I mean, it just, it's hard to not look at this and not see it as dire in that, in that game one. Oh, actually, nice bios there from the high ground. But in that game one, he was holding on while he got Hive, while he got all those things. Like, Hive isn't done. None of those awesome things are done. Never count Steven out of a game. It's true. He will do what he can to try and find ways to get damage done. He just pushed Faz all the way back off his creep. Faz does have a lot, and he's rolling back in, but he doesn't have any tanks with this army. This is all pure marine. Looks like a Bane counterattack coming up. Hive does now get started. Uh, not a great fight there for Steven, though. Nope, but there's only one Widow Mine. Three are coming in. We'll see how the next fight goes. Or a lot of Banes. These Widow Mines do not burrow in time to do anything. Yeah, and the, once again, the medevac energy is non-existent, but I just feel like Foz is grinding him down. Now the Ravagers, the real backbone here, are starting to go down. Eight more SCVs fall. To that Baneling counterattack. But again, oh, more but units. Just, ugh. Steven just cannot catch a break here as he's just, like I said, just getting ground down. Trader mine. Trader mine here, but plus three attack about to finish here. As rallying lings are trying to hold, but they're getting killed and... I mean, these Banelings are going to finish, but just loads up. Banelings come kill the mines, and here come the Marines back down. Fighting with the drones, never a good sign. You say never count Steven out, but at this point, I'm not sure what it is I'll he could possibly out. do. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's the upgrade disadvantage is just yeah. too high eventually at the end. Like, he did some really good fights and some good trades did, there. Yeah. Um, but the parade push from Faz was good. Yeah, he got damaged on the back end with run buys, which could have been prevented by not parade pushing, but, like, I mean, Yeah, I mean, over. many many a lesser Zerg dies a hell of a lot faster there, but at the end of the day, just the opening not going well for Steven, Foz riding that momentum into an equalizing match here in game number two. We're tied up one even faster than expected. We are back. <laughs> Foz said he needed a minute. It was more like 20 seconds. But hey, no complaints from me and no complaints probably from anyone, as spawning up in the top right-hand corner here on Eternal Empire, a map that is famously known as a bastion of Terran power. It's the Terran player. It is Foz. And spawning in the bottom left corner, it is the Purple Zerg, Steven, not Stefan. Not Stefan. And again, so this is, um, again, we are using the old map pool. That's why we are seeing Eternal Empire here. Um, and so I think I know the answer to this question. But for our audience, Coda, can you walk us through why it is that uh, EE is a map that Terrans generally liked an awful lot? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, primarily, bases 1, 2, and 3 are pretty easy to defend with tanks from the high ground. So... You have that, for starters. Um, it's pretty easy to pick your opponents apart as well with the triangle formation. Like, Zerg want to take triangle because the other fourth is just so far out of the way it doesn't make sense to take. And you can bounce between third to main with drops, um, which is really good. And any base after that is kind of difficult. This cliff, if you're looking at uh, Zerg's side of the map, yep. to the right of the third base, mm -hmm. uh, that's really abusable. If either of those fourth bases, you can either shell from the low ground after clearing some creep or high ground tanks for the low ground to high yield. So uh, fourth is a hard base for Zerg to maintain. Yeah, and certainly. I'm sorry. Did he get blocked? No, he's, he's faking a pool first. I have to imagine that's what this is. Because there was no block. He's faking a pool first. He pulled first last game. He's going to throw off the timing of his hatchery and make him think it's the same thing again, when in fact that's the third hatch. This is an incredibly... <laughs> in if, they, if that's what it is, which is what I think it is, then this is an incredibly intelligent move here by Steven. 
I strong agree. Five head plays. I mean, this is the best of series, so this is what you got to do. Bring in some weird. You don't have to, but like, it's fun. It's good. Reaper stays home now. Oh, but he does scout the other base. So now he knows. Yeah. So, you know, the, the jig is up a little bit. Sorry, I had to ban a bot from my chat. Um, but it's done. Goodbye, um, bot. Goodbye, bot. No one will miss you. Uh, you know what? Actually, you know what? That's not fair. Coda, do me a favor. Please shed a single tier. Just one. No, not more than that, but just a single tier for the spam bot in the chat, you know? It has been done. It has been done. All right, that's enough eulogizing of that. Let's get back into the action here. Is this Reaper? He's going to get a uh, Zergling, maybe two, for himself here. Oh, maybe two. Two. Maybe three. He did the uh, good old Halo jump with a grenade. Boing. But yeah, I, again, even though it didn't really work out for Steven here and Foz did scout it, I loved that play. Just like mind games like that are so, so cool to say in a regular game, let alone in a series right after you quick pool. It would be so easy for him to freak out and be like, he's doing it twice. Oh my God. Oh, panic, panic, panic. Foz keeping a cool head, not getting tricked, but you love to see these kind of interesting dynamics pop up in a match. Yeah, and I think Faz's reaction is pretty good. Uh, he's going to go into a 3cc play, which does get scouted by this overlord. But it's it's smart. It's a good play. Yeah, I mean, you know your opponent open, opened up economically, so you're like, all right, cheers, mate. I'll see you on three bases, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that does mean he is going to play Steven at his own game, because Steven likes to make a lot of drones. That is very true. Uh, he does open Viking, which is going to uh, take out some overlords, and which actually, is good. Yeah. Gets a creep tumor as well there over on the other side. Heck yeah. might get caught here with his units though that'd be bad he nope. might nope Rupert grenade is good and we'll not allow that to get surrounded but he's gonna rotate around and dive into this base so these aliens are dead oh yeah they're Should not getting out of this one yeah yeah and uh bob is also dead nope just kidding he lets bob go nope bob is like i've got a death wish come here lings <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to take on that wave of <laughs> they actually turned away the tsunami faded Is there a reason that the Reaper is named Bob? Um, no, that's just what I felt like at that moment. He looked like Bob. I can respect and understand that. And hey, he's still alive here. He's, he's like, all right, now I'm going to come back with more Hellions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we've got Mech. Mech from Foz. Oh, we do. Which I, is how did I not cool. see that coming? Yeah, that is really cool, especially on EE. It's a good Mech map. I, this is the map for it. So if you're going to do Mech, this is the one. And, you know, we talked about how these guys should recycle their strategies, kind of pull out all the stops, all the builds here. And, you know, hey, um, I do think him ones, throwing do down. I think him throwing down double gas gives us away, though. Why? He doesn't have any reason to throw down double gas. If he's going bio immediately with yeah. that Zergling sitting there. Also, more Hellions. It's known now. Yeah, probably. Well, something tells me Steven had already sniffed it out at some point earlier because he it's already the has upgrades, attack. Yeah. yeah. Double Amulet. attack, no armor. Because why are you going to get armor against Siege Shanks or anything? Like, or Cyclones. Yeah, exactly. like, it just doesn't make sense. Shanks are just too good. Well, I mean, they are for armor upgrades, right? Like. <laughs> yep. It's like your carapace is stronger, and we're like, firing main cannon. It's like, well, you know, your carapace <laughs> was stronger. Um... <laughs> Does get He's up in there with the Ling, so if he had any doubts before, he no longer does. Um, and immediately is going to get up that infestation pit as well. Uh, curious really to see no fourth time. base, though, right? Like, Yeah, um, so against Battle Mech, I, I know a lot of Zergs who will delay getting their fourth base just a little bit for getting up a high roach count. 
so that they can shut down any type of aggressive battle mech. Now, Faz was supply blocked here for a moment, uh, He's which going was a really the unfortunate third. time to be hit. Uh oh. He's got blood flame! <gasps> oh my god. How did only three drones die there? Oh! He's still oh. running in! He's still got to. Go! Go! Where are the aliens? 11. 13. 13 I don't know drones. If 13 was worth it. Is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Either. Well, no cyclones went down. And I would say, you know, if this was a four base Zerg, you might look at that and be like, eh, I don't know, but on three bases? I mean, yes, you're, you're not wrong. That is. It's it's better than just having gotten shut down, which is what it looked like with Faz smartly moving around the other side of the extractor, was able to get free with some of those Hellions. Oh snap! So Steven just made a few um, Drop big boys. old overlords. Yeah, he's yeah. about to go like Queen, Roach, and just like push into this. Steven's all inning. That's why the fourth base and the fifth base are super late. Or or is he Ling dropping? Because it looks you know like what? he's Zergling dropping hey, and getting a fourth. Sure. You want to drop wings <laughs> on top of tanks? Oh, no, 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 no. This could get... That. Ooh, these Cyclones getting a decent pick. Oh, he sees this. He sees it. He just saw that, right? Like, no way he didn't see that. Decent picks there with the Roaches, but... All right, where are the rest of the Roaches? Oh, Liberator also finding some damage in uh, Steven's Six base. Six drones and a lot of denied mining. Now, this Zergling drop is coming in, but I, I have to imagine he saw that, right? Kills the fourth, yeah, or cancels the fourth, right? And he, yeah, he's got a couple, he's got a little bit of battle mech at home here, so I can't imagine these Zerglings find too terribly much damage. And that Liberator, seven kills and a lot of denied mining. Let's see what the drop can get done, but eh, meh. Let's see. No, I was liking this for a little bit for Steven, but like, I'm liking it less and less. I don't think Zergling drops were the way to go. I mean, your opponent's pumping out Hellions, which just eat Lings alive. Only four SCVs die. Now yeah, I mean, not worth it really for good. the gas alone of the Dropper Lords, right? Like, Yeah. Uh, so both armies are passing each other on the map. Uh, unless Foz turns around, which it looks like he is. That's he a does. dead... Oh, he's turning around with half the units. I like this a lot. Turn around with half the units. Kill the fourth. That fourth is dead. And he's running in with to the third with Blue Flame Hellions. He's running into the third in the natural, yeah. And Queens to deal with that. The army gets pushed off of Faz's third base. There's three three unattended Hellions here. Oh, they almost got some terrible shots off. And actually, they're going to kill a lot of Lings. Uh, could have been worse. Oh, oh the fungal. fungal goes down on the Cyclones, though. That's a great play there. Tank production now beginning here. But now there's a little bit of a window here for these Roaches to get something done here. Yes, still another, another Fungal. Three-base Zerg against a four-base Terran with a fifth on the way. Yeah, and these roaches are going to start getting killed so, so freaking fast here by these cyclones. Looks like uh, Baneling drops are getting queued up, yeah. But again, like, I look at the supplies, and again, I mean, yeah, Steven has a lot in the bank. He can afford to make, like, a huge roll of roaches, but he's down on supply going roaches. And he's down he's a base. Down he's supply. down a base, Coda. There's no fourth on yes, the way. Yes. The fourth is landing, and the fourth is a PF. Yep. Right? Like, it's now incumbent and on the Zerg to play very efficiently against a Mech Terran. That's... And everyone knows PFs actually don't die. Yeah, I mean, they're super strong at anchoring a point, right? Like, I mean, uh, this just does not look great here for Steven by almost any and metric here of this game. Steven's now supply blocked as well. Yeah, he just, oh, he's catching these tanks and Siege just nice, but is going to be able to get himself out of that situation. And for Faz, I don't think he really needs to push with the tanks here. Just keep pressure on with the Cyclones. Look at this. Just get free roaches here, free roaches there. Maybe that's lock on to this base. That's actually a really cute way to break lock-ons. Yeah. Oh, that's which a dead Which is base. why it's, yep. for it's forcing scans, which is pretty cool. Uh, some of these Cyclones are going to fall now, though. Yeah, he does. He kills the base for it, though. That was not a cancel. That was a kill. And again, it is incumbent on Steven at this point in the game. Ooh, big bailing drop. To where's the third bailing? Well, I mean, it's just one more bailing, so I can't really get a ton like, done. I'm gonna go get damage done on these other SCP. I'm not gonna kill any of them, but I'm gonna bruise them up real bad. Oh, take that! But yeah, like I said, it's it's now incumbent on Steven to fight very cost effectively here. He does have Roach spellcasters moving into where? Okay, these siege tanks just siege. Oh, if he walked into that line, ooh, 15 ravagers. That I mean, that's something. They still can't walk into that line of tanks. He they doesn't have vision. Definitely cannot do that. Um, oh, but there are vipers though. 
And these tanks are pretty clumped up. Two or three blinding clouds here could do Where does he some go, miracles. Though? That's the question. Yeah. Looks like he's, he's going to rotate at the fourth, which is going to give Foz time to position himself here. Here come those tanks. And again, that PF can lock things down for at least a little while here. Here comes the repair. Some tanks getting in range. The Roach count starting to evaporate here. Just Even Ravagers. Here, that's damage done. Yeah, but it's it like, yeah, he's going to kill the fourth, but like, for what? A I mean, huge he chunk of army. And got 12. He got 12 SCVs, but Heli is moving in on the bottom oh, of the map right no. now. Oh, no. We got to imagine there's going to be a scan there, or he's just going to go to the third. Yep, he's going to kill these drones. And Foz goes, okay, yeah, it's three base versus three base. I'm gonna, I've got some extra CCs on the way. My army is getting better. Yours is, isn't really. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he did lose the base, but he's like, it's okay, I've got more. Oh, to Hellbats in the third. 18, 18 drones, drones going down. Steven's on 43 workers. Steven ah. needs to get damage done here, and that's what he's trying to do with There's this gross uh. bait attack. In good bios, However, but... Uh, Steven has a path to the uh, production right now, actually. He does. I mean, but here comes the rest of the army of Foss here. There's still a ton of tanks over at that fort base that aren't even there. These banelings are coming up and killing these slow banelings. I mean, what is he going to do? Bust him with th four Ravagers? And some banelings? Look, there was a moment where he could have gotten on production. Yeah, it was, it, it was. It was. There was. I'm not trying to diminish that, but I mean... Faz, I mean, he maneuvered himself out of that dangerous situation, and now... Yes, he did. If there's something you don't want as a mech Terran, it's stuff on your production. Look at this. This Hellbat's all like, look, I got two health, but I'm chasing. I'm going to get him. <laughs> He's like, ah, he, didn't. Uh, he, didn't he didn't get him. Get him. <laughs> he didn't get him. That ain't it. That ain't it, dog. That ain't it, dog. Uh, somehow, okay, so during that attack, uh, Steven did get some damage done um, to workers, and the worker count is actually 70 on Steven and 49 on Faz. So yeah, Faz has a lot of bases, and he has a big, scary mech stuff, but um, once Steven's hatchery is finished, he can just start mining and be good. I think this is actually looking kind of okay right now for Steven. Hive is done. Bailing speed finally almost done. Yeah, that bailing speed is super important here. I feel like a lot of it's going to come down to the next fight against uh, the mech army. Um, how well does it go one way or the other? Yeah, more vipers getting added in here for Steven. That's what he needs. He needs a lot of vipers. Well, here it comes here it comes Faz. And Steven has, you know, a, a Roach Bane army right here to try to engage this. He's going to do Biles and then disengage, repeat, rinse, repeat. Snipes with one tank. Yeah, but the slow push has begun here. That it has. All of this tanks on siege. That is a very YOLO risky move. Uh, he's, looks like sieges. he's going to get away with it. Yes, he is. Oh, there's the takes over at the ward. That's some good, good biles. And actually, they get some great damage off there. A, a nice pull there as well. Steven needs to be so careful. You cannot go into those tanks. But he's no, just kind of not. dancing at the edge and finding a, a little bit of efficiency there for himself. Yeah, and that's that's going to actually force Faz to pull back. He, doesn't, he lost his anti-air, which means these Vipers could get more energy and go again. Uh, Steven, are you about to kill your hatchery? Steven. Wait, which Steven, hatch? His third. He oh, he killed, killed it, it. With, with with vipers? Yes. Oh god. He it with vipers. I was like looking at the perimeter bases. I was like, what's going on? Yeah, you know, he he sucked his third base dry. Okay. That's clearly the Zerg method. When you Zerg when way. you nut, but the vipers keep sucking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I to, no matter how this goes, I'm gonna have to ask Steven later like how he felt when he looked back at his base. So it's when you can. nut, but the vipers just keep sucking. You're like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> 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 That's how that, my friend, is how you kill your own hatchery. Huge bailing counterattack. This oh, should kill I the PF. The yep. Nice pull away there. Is going to lose the base. Doesn't lose the SCVs for the most part. There are so many tanks, but a very minimal amount of anti air. Um, I know one thing Steven does like to do in these games against Mac is just be like, surprise, 30 mutas out of like literal freaking nowhere. Yeah, but he needs and, to build uh, up that economy first. Oh, these doors could get caught out. That'd be really good for him here. Nice. Blinding clouds yeah, go off. Oh, but the Vipers. 
Actually, so much blinding cloud on everything here, but here it's come the Hellions. Out. The Hellions are going to run down Ravagers. That's not good. It's not the situation you want to be in. Yeah, it's really not. And, I mean, so much of this armory is getting melted here. And, again, right, like, it was a decent start to the trade, but what is he replacing it with? Roaches. Like, eh. Yeah, I mean, roaches aren't the worst thing in the world, but they're also not the best thing in the world, so... I mean, realistically, like, this this is how Zerg plays against Mech right now. They just keep trading out Roaches against Army until their opponent dies. Um, roaches aren't the best, but, like, they are very cheap. And if you take good fights with Vipers against the Mech, you can get a lot of value from them. However, Fat this does is roll a up tough. Here. Very good I was going to say, this is going to be a tough nut to crack right here, assuming he gets a good spread on the tanks. Here we go. Here come some of the Blinding Clouds, and they're really good. Here come... The oh, the Burrowed Infestors. He's going to need to scan. He's actually... Oh, he gets so many of the tanks. He gets so many of the tanks. Yep. And yeah, that's the type of fight you need to take. Right oh, he unsieges them, too. Incredible. Oh, Faust needs to scan and kill these Infestors. Nope, he's just going to dip. He's just going to dip. Funny. He unsieged them, but he definitely could have made them attack each other. Yeah. He's probably... Injecting and stuff. That was probably an escape tactic for the uh, investors. Yeah, just to be like, get them out of here. I don't want to lose these. What a game. Yeah, for real. We're going into the 20th minute here of game number three. And, I mean, so far. I mean, I could still see this going either way. There's that Muta switch you were talking about. But the Thor count is still pretty high. Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, five Thors, yeah, that's, that's a good amount of Thors. But, like... It's it's also five really Thors not. five Thors with plus three. The air upgrades are non-existent. Uh, that's true. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. That's fair. The Mutas are going to do nothing to the Thors. Actually, yeah, they this, can this dodge around the Thors. Yeah, and that's great. But if they get Thor shots on them, they're just going to absolutely melt. Oh, it's going to be close here. And oh no, the one that fires is oh they're, they're on in, high they're, impact. Yeah, they're on high impact mode. So there's a few that get taken out, but three Mutas going down. There's a fourth and. So far, four Mutas for six SCVs. He is rotating around there, trying to find damage. Here come the links in the background, uh, though. But very YOLO move with the... The Zerglings, links. yeah. It looks like they're all just going to kind of bleed out to their death. He's going to get a tank or but two for himself here, but... Steven's going to sit here and just try and pick off some... Uh, some tanks. Anything he can get uh, damage on. Yeah. I feel like he's going to switch back into Roaches here shortly. I would have to still... imagine, yeah. Four yeah, stores, so like, kill tanks, and then build roaches, yeah. Exactly, exactly that. And just surround the Thors with big army and infestors to take control. Well, it looks like Faz is going for a push here. Doesn't want to let him get to that stage of the game. Remember, though, that I think the infestors survived. Yeah, there are still seven infestors. Oh, and this is a great oh trade here goodness. for Steven. This is a game-winning trade, I think, here for Steven. Who's going to wipe this back on me? Yeah. I agree. There's the steal on those Thors, and... GG is called. Steven wow. takes the altar of revolt, boys. Okay. I need to be more like you. Everyone needs to be more like me. Without further ado, let us introduce our champion's revolt. All right, let's do that. Spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, the purple Zerg player. He's up two to one, but he's still got an equal amount of work to do as he has done already. If he wants to be number one, it is Steven. Hey, it's funny, the top right changing up the color because he is now the angry Terran. It is the red Terran Foz. I'm so, kidding. He's probably not angry, but he's ready to bring on the pain. So I got to say here, um, you know, I feel like this uh, this Grand Finals is a little bit of a vindication here for Steve. Oh, I see proxy hatches. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, oh it's a little bit of a vindication. In the first Risen competitive clash, he did take second place to a Swarmonomics that was just not losing to anybody at the time. Um, oh. And he did get yeah. defeated quite soundly in that series. And now, obviously, Swarm wasn't in this one, but um, this is his second shot at the throne. I can't imagine it would feel good to get second place twice. I mean, as good of an accomplishment as that is, I don't mean to make it insulting, but, you know, nobody gets to this level of StarCraft without a competitive streak you don't want to be second, you want to be first, and he's going to have a little something to prove here. Will this SCV see this? It does see this. It does. So true. You're, you're completely right, though. Like, we are really competitive, man. That's just what it is. Oh my god, is, is Faz about to try to 
So Fazu can take the, <laughs> the low balls ground. of this man. The balls of this man. He does. Okay, so here's the thing. Proxy hatch can go so many different ways, right? It can either be an all in. It could be I'm building a hatch. I'm gonna make a queen. I'm gonna spread creep, and I took two bases behind it. And Steven, and I will say, Steven is known for that move. The like, ooh, I'm proxy hatching you. Freak out. Ooh, yeah. you should freak out. And then he's like, nah, I'm just going to make a queen spread creep around your half of the map. Be annoying, but like not really overly commit to the aggression with no roach warren or anything. He is staying in gas here. Let's see if he yeah. stays in. Oh, no, he pulls out immediately after speed. So it's going to be that level of commitment, which plays in Foss's favor considering how brazenly he's just like, no, oh, screw you, I'm gonna take my <laughs> take it on the low ground. Now there are ten so, links coming out, but like Um I I just practiced this against uh uh Steven when we were grinding some practice games before this tournament. And uh I didn't try just building the CC on the low ground. That's really interesting. I'm kind of afraid that it's not gonna work though. Yeah, well he's gotta finish it, right? Like and then he can just he's lift it. Right. There's he has no, to, if even if he even if he kills this bad. SAV, right? There's no scenario where he doesn't finish it. It's so close. Like, there's but there's, there's only three Marines in the bunker. There are Zerglings streaming in right now. He can attack this here in a moment and make sure that this doesn't go down. Oh he no! He could cut off the Marines. Yep. He cuts them off. Do they get in? One. One gets Only in. one. This is so many links. Yeah. All right. Well, never mind. I take it all back. Um, this is now disastrous. He's not gonna be. Oh, oh he, he, will, he will. He will. He will. He will. But the, there's a wall. Oh, the book. The, the barracks is lifting. Gg. 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 And then we'll get into that. Spawning down in the bottom left-hand corner here. Oops. Did that the wrong way. The red Terran player. It is Foz. And spawning in the top right corner, it is the Purple Zerg looking to close this out and take the dub. It's Steven. Yes, it is. But as I was saying, this is not a match that is um, purely just about bragging rights. Obviously, you know, I think it it's a lot about that. Um, but there's a payout here. Um, Coda, as I just mentioned, is going to be taking home $10.00. As mm -hmm. his uh, right, as getting third place here to these two titans. And the winner of this match is going to be taking home $30. The second place is going to be taking home $20. So nothing crazy, but a little a little something-something. You know, a little, a little pocket Actually, change. since we have made money, does that make us professionals? I believe it does. Um, oh, buddy. But I mean, oh, hey, buddy. you know, you, you make you make 30 bucks, you treat yourself to a nice, uh, a nice mm -hmm. dinner and a six-pack, something like that. Oh, I'm still at a dinner from another tournament I played in recently. Which There's this, like, that? angry Canadian who, like, pays out, like, weekly tournaments. He's like, I'll Uber eat you food. And, like, that's his payout. No, that's not a bad payout. It's not a bad payout it's at all. It's not a bad payout. I, Marine first. Hmm. Yeah. Talk, me, talk to me about that. What do you think about that? That's, I mean, certainly um, not standard. <clears throat> so the gas timing was normal. So that means we're going to see potentially a faster factory. Um... Quick reactor. Uh, it could be used for a couple things, you know, a deny Overlord Scout faster. Uh, you you go through your tech tree a little bit faster whenever you skip the, reactor, but you also lose the ability to get the scouting information. From yeah, your I mean, opponent. Steven at this point, when his pool finishes, doesn't have to make the four links. He can just make drones, right? Like, there's no reason for him to make the links here. Yes, that is correct. He can also do that as well. Um, usually, you don't show your first marine. Normally, there's not a drone on the other side of the map. Well, okay? that's, that's not true. normal. But I mean, um, Steven thinks, you know. And yeah, I, I, it's true. Correct me if I'm. I, I might be. I might be off place here. But so much of um, you know, Steven's player. I think I might have casted Steven, maybe more than any other player that I've casted, just from uh, all of the RSL stuff. But I have to have casted a ton of his matches, and in ZVT specifically, I feel like I've casted like at least 20 ZVTs of him. Probably, no, a, a lot more than that because he's played like three best of sevens with Eternal. I've casted him versus you a couple times. And almost every move that I see him do is calculated with, with a purpose. And that's what makes him a great player. It's not just that he is good, but that he plays intelligently in a series. And, you know, we saw the fake pool first after he real pool first early in this series. We saw a hatch 
um, a proxy hatch and then showing a drone across the map. Like, all of this feels so intentional to me. You do something standard and then you throw misdirections while you play normal. Like, it's honestly the part of, the pl of Steven's play that I admire more than anything else because, you know... Yeah, he macros great. Yeah, he's super resilient. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of Zergs like that, right? And that's commendable, but there's a lot of Zergs like that. But his intelligence and his serious decision-making has always been something that I viewed that really sets him apart here from other players. I I strongly agree. I think he's a very intelligent player, and he does a lot of things with purpose. He doesn't just do things to do things, um, or just do it because he sees other people do it. He knows what he's doing. It's calculated. I just want to say, when I saw Faz making naked marines i mean so i'm sorry marines off of a naked barracks marines have armor on um, and an armory is about to finish an armory yeah and then he did how about marine timing i guess yep how about marine timing that's what he's going for he's so, going to go across the map boost the meta back and hit with marines uh this is actually something i have heard steven talk about multiple times that he has frustrations against however i think he did identify it though by i think he saw the naked barracks or I was maybe it was gonna marines. say like this queen count with some links like I feel like he slaps this. Yeah, so the queen count, that's normal for him. That this is a Yeah, but like, thing. Well, I mean, with the tools he's got here, 16 more links about to pop. I mean, this is, I mean, he's going to have to control well. But I feel he, like he, he slaps he this. Yeah, he just he slaps, slaps this. Yeah. This doesn't do anything. Um, The only thing about this is it's much more low committal than like, than like a Hellbat like Marauder. Hellbat. Yeah, it is. Which is what I prefer because fucking Hellbat slap. True, but I'm I mean, sorry. at the same time, uh, like, you, you, you you invested a lot here to get stuff done. You got nothing done. And now here comes a huge Zergling counterattack. He knows all those Hellions and are there across is the map. No wall. There is no wall. This is oh, going no. to go There's very no poorly. This is going to go very poorly. There is a Hellion drop coming on, but he... That's a lot of Lings. He's going to kill every single one of these SCVs. Every single one. Yes, he is. This is not the position you want to be in right now as fast. Especially whenever you are just now trying to... You haven't even dropped your third base yet. Yeah. Yeah. Here comes the Hellion drop. We're going to have to see how much that gets done. It looks like it could be a lot. The SC or the drones are running away, but oh, he's a little bit slow on the chase here. A Liberator coming up as well. He bogs up that ramp. You're not going to get down it. You have to Elevator down it. But Steven, astute on the runaway. Really yeah. good micro. Yeah, from both these both guys, players. honestly. Yeah. But I, the net the net is just way better, I think, here from Steven. I agree. Strong agree. 22 uh, workers well to 38. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, like, in a bunch of these games, we've been like, oh, Steven's way behind. How is and he going to drag this back? Off. Yeah, how is he going to drag this game back? Well, now Steven's really ahead. Yeah. Now he's really ahead. And it's going to be Foss, who's got to be the guy that, you know, pulls himself back from the gates of hell here. Yes. Because make no um, mistake, that's where he's at. Game. That's where he's at. He's in match point against a... Macro Zerg, who's sitting in a dream spot here. He has his work cut out for him. But I'll tell you what, Code, I've said it once. I'll say it a hundred times. Mountains are there to be climbed. Um, I'm scared of heights, so uh, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Oh, Let's this kill is a drones. Good start. This is a good start. Four drones go down. Can he get out or at least get a good trade here with these Hellions? Looks like the answer is... Not really. No. Good micro there by now, Steven with the Queens. It's almost up double the supply and 20 workers ahead. Layer is about to finish. I have to imagine, you know, the, the adage in ZVT has always been, you know, if you have a tempo advantage, Spire is just like 100% the moves because it takes that tempo advantage and it allows you to absolutely capitalize on it here. I would be shocked if we don't see a Spire here from Steven. So I think that Steven is going to Spire. That just seems like the appropriate response right here. That's just, that's what's, that's what you do in this match. Yeah. Take a fourth, build a Spire, um, which still hasn't been dropped yet, which I'm kind of surprised about considering he has every gas at the moment. Uh, minus one. Well, he's not even mining off the ones at the third. Um, I think that there is a window here for Faz and this. Oh, there's scouted. the Spire, yeah. But Faz spire is, is pushing down. out. Um... Oh, but the upgrades, Coda, like, it's going to be 1-1. One, one. It is. Steven, you, it want, you want an upgrade lead as the Terran. He is going to be this... at the absolute opposite of an upgrade lead. He's going to be at a drastic upgrade deficit. The queen count's this really high. This is a high. super uphill battle. And it's all going to come down to micro. It's starting out really well for him. He picks off a bunch of queens for almost nothing here, just medevac energy. But now the Veilings are here. 
And yeah, they're slow bailings. But he's fighting on creep, right? Like, I, I just, it's going to be hard for him to... I don't see this getting more than creep here. Oh, tanks on siege. Tanks on siege. Gets dives on. He might be able to get out of here with a lot of the marines, but... Nope. Medivacs nope. die. Medivacs die. Marines That's everything dead. Drive. Yep. He's going to send some oh, more marines more in to marines, try and save. But they're just going to tie to links. 1-1 one, one versus not 1-1. One, one. There's no third base here. Not landed, well, the third at least. Base yeah, there's no... Still, th there, but, sorry, yeah, there's yeah. no landed third base. There is a third. Um, but Steven's just going to run him down. And, oh, good save uh, on the tank. Good, great good great save. save on the tank, but... Steven goes, all right, cheers, mate. I'm going to go drone up my fourth base and slam you in the face with mutalisks. And let's have you defend those for a couple minutes while I go up to Hive and all of the fun things that I want there. Um, I think Faz senses this. He's going into Widow Mines. Stop tank production, make Widow Mines, take third base. And this, that's where he needs to be at right now, right? He has to play on the defense. He lost his ability to be aggressive, and now he just has to defend. Every single game, I think, this series, that Faz has tried to take a third base, there's just been a link there at the appropriate time. Nope, yeah. not today. And here we go. I mean, this third is not coming down anytime soon, right? Like, he's just going to be like, all right, I'm going to deny it. Make it another 30, 40 seconds before you get this. And yeah, actually, never mind. He's going to back out here. I think that's the right play. Like I said, his fourth is now fully droned up. He will allow the Terran to land their third. Um, but again, still no 2-2 two -two here on the way here for Foz. Cause, you know, he, and, and that's not like, oh, Foz is really screwing up here. It's that like he has just been under, tr under a tremendous amount of pressure here. And he doesn't yep. have the money to get all the things he wants or he needs. No, he doesn't. And now there's mutas on the map. So your ability to do drops has just been... It doesn't exist, especially yeah. when you're behind. Yeah, um, I mean, so there's a storm coming. There's no turrets. There's no turrets, Coda. There's not. He's, he about to lose, mind. he's about to lose a lot of SCVs, I think. He's about to lose a lot of SCVs. Shh, do not use that, that word in vain. That phrase in vain. Uh, I guess I won't, but here we go. Let's see what the damage toll is. Three? Only a three lot. so far, but he's going to rotate into the natural as well. And so far, this isn't going too bad for him. These rallied marines are getting some some decent shots in. It's gonna be eight. Yeah, could have been worse. Could have been a whole lot worse there. Been worse. A lot of low HP SCVs. Uh, SCVs at the natural still are not mining though. He needs to not make these little errors because he needs to stay in the uh, every every mineral counts at this point for him. Yeah. Um, he needs to play really defensive. Just turtle. Make a third CC. Force Zerg to attack into you because otherwise the game won't end if they don't kill you. Yeah. Um, and just go through the tech tree. Let your Zerg opponent expand because you don't really have much of a choice now. Yeah, but all that damage there with those mutas, that was icing on the cake. Because what's happening here? Creep everywhere. Hive about to finish. Oh, yeah. Air upgrades. Tons of banelings. Like, if he got damage, he was like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm good with that. But if he didn't... Ooh, good big widow my shot. That was, a, that was a good widow my shot, yeah. He gets another one there on his way out. But again, just this huge ground army coming out here. Gets oh. a tank as well. That's a nice pick off. And that poor low HP tank that was saved. 42 more Zerglings on the way. 3-3 three, three on the way. Adrenal, like, Ultralisk. I mean, you talked about how at the beginning of this uh, series, like, Foz is the guy that wants to be aggressive. He doesn't want to go to that hyper late game versus Steven. Well, if he wants to win yeah. this game, he has no choice. That is the only way he wins this. That is correct. He does not have a choice. It's, it's kind of... It, the ball's in Steven's park, right? Um, but he should scout this, right? He sees the Ultra's cabin. The, the medevac was in there. He knows what he needs to do. He, he knows the state of the game. He recognizes what's going on. Um, I really hope he doesn't try to just push across the map. He's going to try to push across the map. I mean, because, but again, he, it's going to take like him Ultra. so long. Like, look at the creep. It's going to take him so long to actually get into a threatening position here. Well... So he's like five scans away from threatening a base, right? Like, maybe. I mean, you could always just do like me and just fucking go on creep and not give a fuck. Yeah, that's a dangerous game to play, though, especially with four. Count them. Faz's One, two, three, micro... four ultralisks on the way. Faz's micro is good. He can split against bands. I have faith in him. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, those were great baneling hits. Those were tremendous baneling hits. Uh, Not damaging yeah. the bio a ton, but killing all the mines. And now the second wave of banes is uncontested. More great baneling hits. GG is called. Steven is your RCC2 champion. Taking that series 4-1. to one, Running the gambit here. Only dropping two maps in the entire thing. And you gotta say congratulations to the guy. He has looked absolutely imperious at every stage of this tournament. And will rightfully, I think, walk away with that first place medal. Oh, that's fair. He's a very good player. Hello, user. Welcome to the party. Oh, it's you. It's you, Steven. Hi. I tried Hello. Him. Winner's interview, Steven. Are you good with that? Yeah, sure. Where so, uh, first of all, I got to say on behalf of uh, Coda, myself, and all of us in competitive, congratulations here on taking the dub in RCC2. Um, first question, the one that everybody gets when they win, how does it feel? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Um, it was a little embarrassing that I was like, oh yeah, my macro is good. And then the first game, I fought like 2,000 minerals for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, she hit. And then you're like, damn it. You're talking to yourself. Like, damn it, Stephen, I have a reputation to live up to. Like, yeah. Like, I just said I was liking my macro. <laughs> and then I do that. But yeah, these are some good games. Uh, I was really surprised about the win versus his mech on Eternal Empire. I thought I was really far behind. Uh, we thought that at, well. Uh, we thought that as well at certain stages of that game, um, and it's actually a, a theme that I want to touch on here, because um, in both game number one and that I think it was game number three, the Eternal Empire game, um, yeah. there were stages of that game where Code and I, you know, we had the all-seeing eye, we saw everything, and we looked at that and we were like, oh, this does just not look really great here for Steven. Um, but I'll be honest, you know, you, you did play very well even in, in that last game where you did get ahead. But I'll be honest, like it almost seemed like you played better when you were behind. <laughs> Can you speak to that uh, a little bit? Because it seemed like you had that clutch factor that when you were like, all right, well, shit, we got 12 Ravages, a couple of Infestors, and a Dream. I guess we'll try and hold this push. Like That was when you really pulled out the stops. You had like two Vipers that were being MVPs. Like, like what's going through uh, your head in a scenario where, like you said, you, you have to feel like you're not in a great spot? I guess that's just my comfort zone because I'm so used to playing weird shit that I end up really far behind fairly often. Um, or for a longer time I played weird shit, so I'm very comfortable when I'm behind. Um, where when I'm ahead, sometimes it can feel a bit awkward. It's like, why aren't I meant to be defending stuff and reacting to what they're doing? That's sort of a strength of Zerg. But I'm so far ahead that they have nothing for me to react to. So I have lost games where I've gotten ridiculously far ahead and then stalled out because I don't know what. You're like, wait, I need to be doing something drastic. And you're like, wait, no, 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 hold, hold the phones. I'm ahead here, right? Like, like I'm ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> he has no units. How am I meant to counter this? Exactly. <laughs> I, I have to ask uh, because we're talking about the Eternal Empire game. Uh, that was very close, and of course, you had your two, two to three vipers at different points that were just super MVPs. Was it a calculated? calculated decision to kill your own hatchery for energy or was that just an oopsie, <laughs> uh, oopsie. very oopsie. you missed it you missed it but we made the meme when you nut but the viper keeps on sucking <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah i did definitely are oh, you they gave the zerg unit the one that can kill its own building <laughs> i was like oh my god it's dying i'm like thinking the back of my head like He's going to move it. He has calculated this decision. He's good. And then it doesn't happen. You just kill your head. Yeah, I killed it. I really should have pulled off the Evo Chambers. So spread one on each Evo Chamber. Like, after that, you'll see I spread on the Evo Chambers yeah. and Roach Warrant. But at the time, I was like, ah, shit, I need energy right now. What's the closest building? You're like, I need energy right now. And you just looked at the third base and you're like, that is my victim. 
The thermos is yeah. like, come on, man. We've been through such good times together, man. We, we've given you so much minerals and gas that you don't have to do this, man. There's other ways. But, you know, hey. Um, you know. I do have to ask. Can I take the next question? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, totally. Um, I noticed a lot of the games, especially the ones you were behind in, a lot of you, the clutch plays for you, even in the game that you lost, it was a gold. Um, you, you're... Your backstab play was really good. Um, you would, I think, at one point you ran some zerglings by on pillars of gold and got twenty four SCVs. Um, do you have any advice for Terrans out there who are struggling against zergs like you, who have just these really incredible backstabs with units? What kind of things do you see that Terrans do that uh, curb your ability to backstab them as hard as you do? Because yeah, you do it really well. Congrats on your win, Stephen. How do we beat you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can definitely hear Coda wanting information. Um, I think the main thing is just Terrans, a lot of Terrans won't have any sort of map vision. So especially when I'm Terran, I love to have a Widowmine scattered around or depots or, or Marines, just so I have some sort of knowledge, so I know when it's safe for me to pull my rally to join in with the army and when I have to keep it at a depot. There's always the option of like a bunker outside of the natural and a tank around. That's really good at defending, but that does get expensive supply-wise pretty quick. So okay. the main thing yeah. is getting that map awareness and knowing that if you're not pressuring a Zerg at that moment, a good Zerg knows that he can pull pretty much all of his Lings away because Lings don't do anything to Marines when they poke in and then suddenly. But you saw a number of times that game where he would poke forward with his Marines. I would have like twice the number of Zerglings and they would kill a Marine. Yeah, yeah. They didn't actually add and, anything. And I think that goes even more to speak to like the tightrope that you have to walk because the bigger the counterattack, obviously, the less you have at home to defend. So, you know, you really mm. have to strike the right balance there between what's what's counterattacking, what's keeping Terran units at home. But if I overcommit to that, I might just like, you know, win the battle oh, yeah. win the battle lose the war, right? Game? Like that last game it was a huge gamble. I pulled nearly every Zergling out of my army to go counter it. Yeah, we saw that, yeah. But, I mean, that ended up being a, a tremendously great decision for you there. It did work out, especially because I managed to get half of them out. Like, he traps them in his back of the natural, and I was like, okay, I've traded 50 lings for about 10 workers lifting a base yeah, pulling his arm off. Which is okay. And then he let 30 of them get away. Did he think that he had killed all of them? And then glance back and see if I was hiding them in the back. Well, of you were also kind of um, zoning them with the queens as well, which was a huge factor there. Yeah, so the queen bane at home, and then any new units you rally in. So yeah, yeah. He might have been able to break me there if he pushed in and did like coda level splitting, where you poke in and then all the rings go. In I like directions. I like that. That's a description, by the way. I love that. That's a description. Like. Oh, it's so frustrating. That's like, levels so of spinning, yeah. and there's a of Marines, and two seconds later, they're all heading in different directions. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm flattered that we we comment on good splits as Coda level splits. Yeah, thank I, you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so I guess my my next question would be, um, you know, and I I brought it up with Coda during the cast that I think that um you Stephen might be the player that I've casted more than anyone else, just, you know, counting all, like, what, the last two years of RSL stuff, you know? Um, like, over the last two years, I feel like I've casted a ton of your games, and specifically, like, a ton of your CVTs. Um, and one of the things I was looking for, and, and I feel like I noticed a few things that stood out for me there in that series is, you know, uh, game two, I think it was, that you went for the fast pool, and then game three, what I'm assuming you were doing there, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but by taking that third first was was faking the fast pool, correct? Like, uh, it was either. I'm I nearly always in that last map pool. I've played like eight different series on it, or probably more. That yeah. I think you casted, and I've nearly always proxy hatched on Eternal Empire. Yeah, just yeah. just like a little bit of a and mind game there. Yeah, like with Faz, I've also proxy like Eternal Empire in that map. The best. Because they can't really take a third very easily. There's only one option which I can creep up quickly. Yeah. Uh, a single tumor on the edge of the base on any of the sides blocks the actual base landing. 
so it's really easy to hide tumors. Yeah. Um, and it's a really long map, so when you get the proxy hatch down, the SCV scout takes longer to get to your site to know what's going on. So that's why Eternal Empire is such a good proxy hatch map. Due to that, I was like, either he'll think I'm going pool first, like last game, doing a more committed version, which doesn't happen, or he'll think I'm proxy hatching. Either way, his response will be to keep the Reaper home and to look around. The big gamble I was making was if he poked he actually poked up with the SCV. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he, he actually looked out. around too, which, you know, to his credit. Yeah. Um, he did look around. He had the information to know that I was hiding. But I saw he kept the Reaper at home for another, like, 10 minutes. Which I yeah. think was it. He poked over, seen there was no proxy hatch by his third or on that low ground. He really should have just sent the Reaper straight across. And then he could have done some damage in my main base. So I guess the grander question that I'm getting to there is that, um, you know, as I said, I've casted a shit ton of your, your series. And, and one of the things that I personally admire, as it's always something that I've tried to do when I play series, is not just, you know, wantonly throw out builds and strategies on different maps, but actually kind of um, have a thought process for how we approach a series, not just you know, five or seven or whatever individual games. Um, and that's something that I feel like I've seen from you over the course of the last two years and even evolve and get better at over the course of the last two years. Um, so can you walk me through what, what it looks like kind of in your head as you approach playing Foz or Coda or, or any of these players that, you know, you're both kind of familiar at, but you know you have to play them in up to seven consecutive games. Like, what is that... Um, Outside of the, like, well, you know, having, hitting your timings and macroing well and blah, 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 how does the, like, what do you, what's your opinion on the mental side of something like that? Um, so the first step I always take is if I know the player, I think about what it is that makes them a player and why, like, how do they pick um, and what peeves. So, for example, I'll use my prep for Coda. Versus Coda, I knew that he specifically hated two base muta play. So I went and found, I looked at all of my builds, because I have a list of builds that I've written down and like ideas of how to play the game. Yeah. And figured out how many of them I could execute well two base and like what variations I could make. And then I could have played like five games which all had nearly identical partners to like two base muta, and only one of them would actually be two base. And the other four would shit on his five bracks all in, which is what he did for Peter. Yeah, it's kind of like you've got that plan, but there's also a bunch of fake outs kind of listed in. And they look similar enough and yeah. to identify them. It does get harder the better you know the first person. So like Faz, I have done this with Faz, and he's gotten pretty good at identifying the variations. Like, that's why I did the um, proxy hatch right link flood with speed that killed him on ice and chrome. That's a variation of proxy hatch which I personally don't like that much. But since I don't like it, and I've never done it versus fast because I don't like it, means yeah. that it's probably the best version of proxy hatch. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, the idea is finding builds that can be misconstrued as the same build and have similar tendencies because then it's also easier for you to prep if all of the builds will look the same for the first three minutes of the game you only need it, to yeah like it makes it that much harder to read which one of them it actually is harder for them to read it and it's easier for you to practice and build up to it that and yeah once a whole you lot of learn sense. those sort of openers because after these sort of series you will remember this you won't just forget it by the time you play again yeah so it's easier for you to take a pre-made build that one of the pros did and adapt it to look like whatever you want it to look like. Find out how to adjust and change it. And then you can take one of the pro builds and turn it into your own version. It probably won't be as crisp and efficient, but we're not playing at the pro level. So it doesn't need to be as crisp or efficient. It just needs to be good enough to get past. Yeah. 
I, I have one more, but I'll throw it to Coda here. You got anything else here? Or? Um, no, I think uh, both players, you know, showed up, played good games. Um, Steven did a very good job of when playing from behind, um, just, you know, pulling it out and not just GGing out whenever he thought he was going to lose. He played to the bitter end, famous to GG timing, but that's, that's how you win games sometimes. So, it's tough. Oh, it wasn't quite to fantasy GG timing, but, like, you were behind on a couple of those games, and you just, you're resilient. You're a very good player. Don't worry, I've, I've done it. Fantasy GG timing. Like, I've got one base and a corner base. And I might I've, have. I've, I've, I was going to say, I've casted some of those where I'm like, well, there's three banelings, and if they connect on all 57 <laughs> Marines at once, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen some of those from Steven. But like you yeah. said, you know, for, for every. For, winner. For, yeah, I was going to say, for every, for every five of those games where you're like, you're fucked, every five or six of those games, maybe you drag one back. Maybe you drag one back. And, yeah, think... you know, that makes it worth it. The one and, that you cast, I remember, is that series versus Kilimanjaro. Oh, from, I know, I know exactly I, the map you're talking. My whole army consisted of twenty four. Yeah, yeah, I remember that because I think what I think we talked after that, and you told me that like you could hear me dying inside as I like tried to cast a game <laughs> that I knew was just like so beyond over, and I was like, well, well, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> like, <laughs> I just still have a chance. <laughs> if he never figures out he just needs to split his army in half, yeah. then I'll be okay. Um, so I guess my, my final question for the night is, um, you know, this is, uh, I, you know, your first RCC to take, although to be fair, there's been two, and you've been in the finals of both of them. Um, but, you know, we had our first our Risen Competitive Clash here in the spring, um, where Swarmonomics was... Uh, in prime Swarmonomics form and kind of slapped everyone, no offense meant, but yourself included in those finals and in yeah. the winner's bracket finals. Um, and one of the things I talked about during the cast was like, I feel like this is a redemption arc here for Steven, who, you know, we saw him come so close to kind of taste in gold there in the last time, but was stopped very abruptly. And I was saying like, I know how competitive all of these competitive team guys are right we are the competitive team um did that play a factor was that like a little bit of an extra um for you where you were like nope i'm not gonna get second twice or were you just trying to kind of separate yourself from any emotion like that um i wasn't really thinking about the first one in swarmonomics because swarmonomics is sort of left the picture which is sad that he's no longer really playing if he had been my opponent, then probably that would have been a strong drive. But because my two last opponents were Coda and Faz, who were my practice partners, it was very much a, can I get a one-up on? Can I be like, yep, I've beaten you in all of the professionals, all of the series that we've done for actual events. It doesn't matter how many times you beat my head in in custom games. I've got the official record. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that I love is that this will only spur, as I'm sure, all of all three of you. Because I'll tell you what, I know for a fact that, Steven, that's not a mantle that you plan on dropping lightly. And I also know oh. that Coda and Foz, they're going to have an eye. They're going to, you know, as soon as you take the crown, everybody's got uh, their eye on you. And um, at the end of the day, all that means is that iron is going to continue sharpening iron. And we're probably going to be in store for... What will uh, hopefully eventually be a wonderful Risen Competitive Clash 3. And now, the important question. Coda, well, how does it feel you, being... I was going to say, you're turning things around on us. The interviewee Wait, becomes what? the interviewer. What's he the question? Hasn't... You got the bronze medal. How does it feel? Oh, it feels uh, not as but fulfilling how... as it would have been to make it to the finals. Yeah. I wanted a, a chance at slapping you again, or at least not getting fucking 4 would by you. So, I mean, it's okay. I'm coming for you next time, Steven. Don't worry. You know, Steven, you lost two maps in this tournament, which, considering the caliber of players that were involved in this tournament, is uh, daunting, to say the least. But you'd have to say that anyone that <laughs> was a part of those two maps that were taken, they're truly incredible <laughs> players, or they at least know how to make void rays. Would you agree with that statement? Wait, I only lost two maps? You only lost two maps. 
I will recite your path through this tournament for you here. Uh, you went 3-0 over Savior, and then um, you went 3-1 against an here-to-be unidentified Protoss player. And then you went 3-0 <laughs> over Renegade, you went 4-0 over Coda, and then here in the finals you went 4-1 over Faz. Could have sworn I lost the game to Coda, didn't I? No, dude, you, you did not. Me. You did not. Yeah. So I must say, you know, those two players, I mean, can we have a moment, a round, right. of, a round of applause for those two players, you know? The unidentified so Protoss and Faz. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like unidentified Protoss specifically. You know, I don't know I don't know if you can hear me. I don't even know if you're out there, unidentified Protoss player, but I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, hey, I, Revolt. I can only hope that he can hear me wherever he is. Hey Revolt. What? This is your conscience speaking. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm a constant gamer. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Um, but all of that said, I think we can wrap things up here. Congratulations, Stephen. Um, you once again are lifting a, a a gold medal. I feel like I've told you that like five times before in RSL. And I'll be honest, I'm happy to be telling you that again here in RCC. Um, yeah, your credit to your team. Congratulations. Congrats, my friend. You deserve it. Thank you very much, guys. I'll, I'll give you the final word here, Stephen. Anything you want to say to the people before we cut things off here? I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you liked the series. That's okay. all I got. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody, Steve. for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, please drop a follow, and um, please send the VOD to people because it was a fun. It was a fun series. It was a fun tournament. There will be a third. Good night, everybody. Good. I have to.